today we're going to look at right triangle relationships and I'm going to show you a foolproof way of identifying the sides of right triangles. First of all, let's look at see what a right triangle is and review. A right triangle one is one that has a right angle, that is one that has a 90 degree angle in it. Once you've identified the right angle, the easiest way to identify all the sides of a right triangle is identify the hypotenuse, H. It is always the longest side. You need to remember to write it down on the triangle. The next thing we want to do is locate the angle of interest and draw a longer arch so that it goes through the hypotenuse and one of the sides. The reason we do this, it makes the sides easier to identify. Now that you've done that, the side that touches the angle of interest, which is not the hypotenuse, is called the adjacent side. Put an A by the adjacent side. The last thing you, you do is find the opposite side. That's the only side that's left. So that becomes an easy way to identify a triangle. The number one mistake is getting the opposite and adjacent confused, which one is which. Using this method, it's almost impossible to get it wrong when you write it down. So let's go over these procedures. First, you find the right angle. Then you find the hypotenuse and label the hypotenuse with an H. The next step, we find the angle of interest. It could be theta. It could be a letter, it could be number of degrees. We Then, when you do that, make a larger arc and label the adjacent angle, the one that touches that angle of interest, label that A. And the very last thing, label the opposite side O. If you do these, you will never get the sides of the triangle incorrect. So let's try another triangle. First we identify the right angle. Next we identify the hypotenuse, which is the longest side. The third thing we do is after we have identified the angle of interest, we draw a larger arch through it, and the side that touches that is called the adjacent. Label that A. The last thing we do is find the opposite side. That's opposite to the angle of interest. In this case, the angle of interest is shown in blue. Let's take another triangle that's tilted a little bit different way. When the triangles are small and long and thin, they're sometimes more difficult to see which one actually is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is never on the same side as the right angle. It's always on the opposite side of the right angle. Now that we've labeled the hypotenuse, the next thing we want to do is look at the side that touches that angle of interest, theta. Label that adjacent side with an A. And then the last thing we want to do is find the opposite side. That's the only side we have left. There you are. That's the O in opposite. The other thing that we can do, we can find the length of the sides 
of the hypotenuse adjacent and opposite sides if we're given a right triangle. We want to look to see which one of these sides is the longest. The length of sides we are given are 3, 4, and 5. So clearly 5 is the longest side and that would be our hypotenuse. I've labeled a hypotenuse with an H and set it equal to 5. The next thing we want to do is find which angle, I mean which side touches the angle of interest. And that would be side 3 with a length of 3. We label that side with an A, meaning adjacent. The last thing we want to do is label our opposite side. That is opposite to the angle of interest theta. The only side we have left is the side with the length of 4. So 4 is the opposite side. So I hope this will help you label your right triangles correctly.